Good morning, my name is Pastor Jeremy Shines and this is I Am Loved uh, Church. Let's pray. Father, bless this word. Thank you for your word. Speak through this heart and this mind, these lips, open their hearts and minds and spirits to your perfect word in Jesus' name. Amen. If you turn your Bibles over to... <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 5, we're going to cover verse 6 through 11. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 through 11. This message is going to be called Training for War. Training for War. Not in the sense that you think of it, right? Not literal, right? Our weapons are not carnal, but spiritual and mighty that we pull down the strongholds of the enemy through God, all right? So these are all illustrations here. I'm not saying physically go fight someone, physically go throw a grenade or something like that. I'm talking about spiritually speaking, amen? With that being said, we are in a war. We are born into a war, says one ex-Satanist who gave their life to Jesus, all right? We are born into a war, but it's not carnal. It's not physical as spiritual. It is literally truth versus lies. Now it does manifest physically. If someone believes a lie, they go and kill someone because they believe the lie, right? If someone believes the truth, then they love someone. They go, they're nice to them. Amen. And so we can see the behavior of how, what people believe by how they treat each other. If they believe a lie, they're gonna treat each other horrible. But if they believe the truth, they're gonna treat each other kindly. Amen. And so our goal is not to go and punch someone in the face to make them believe the truth. Our goal is to try to convince people, we, right, that this is the truth and out of them believing the truth then that changes the way they treat one another. So basically, the reason why people are mean is because they're believing a lie. And Jesus comes in the world as the truth, and he comes to bring the truth to people and says, this is the truth. And so when people come to the truth, then people start being nice to people. When people start living in truth, the word of God, they start treating each other lovingly, and heaven is manifested on earth. But when people don't want Jesus, as Lord and Savior, don't want him to be their master over their life. They're going to recreate what right and wrong is from their in their own eyes, and usually what that's going to look like is violence. Amen? Or selfishness. And so, sad to say, many people don't want the truth. And we need to train ourselves. We call ourselves Christians. I want you to understand something. When you enlisted as a Christian, when you received Jesus as a savior, you enlisted into his military, so to speak. And when you enlist into the military, I was in the military, they have control over your entire life. You become a slave to them. Hear me out? When you and I join the military, if you were to physically literally join the military, you become a slave to the military and they can tell you what to do. They can tell you how to do this, how to do that, right? They have full control over your life. It's no different than when you become a Christian. When you say you're a Christian, you are submitting to Christ and his teachings, the word of God. It perplexes me that people say they're Christians, but they're not a slave to Christ. They still try to have their own rights. If you want your own rights and your own way, don't join the military because it's going to be stripped from you. And those people who don't want to submit, they get kicked out of the military. Simple. Same thing with Jesus. Those who want to submit, God is going to use you for all kinds of things. Those who don't, God ain't going to use you. Matter of fact, the scriptures say God, I don't want to say kicks you out of his family, but he puts you on the bench. 
but God uses those who submit to him. Amen. Just like at a job, the hardest, hardest worker always gets put to work. And the one who's not working doesn't get put to work. Amen. And so as we dive in here, I want you guys to understand something. You are joining a spiritual military. And Christ is, the, is your master and you're his slave and you do whatever he says. That's the idea. And, and as we do what he says, he is training us to confront the enemy. In other words, he's training us to confront the lies. He's training us in the truth, his word, so that we can go and live in truth to our spouse, to our kids, to our friends and family, to our church, to our community. In other words, also to the enemies of those who don't believe in the truth. But our weapons are not carnal. We're not going to go over there and punch people who we disagree with. That's the way the world reacts. That's not the weapons that we use. We use the weapons of forgiveness, the weapons of patience, the weapon of, weapons of mercy, the weapons of love, the weapons of scripture. We speak truth. When they say speak truth in love, they say speak truth gently. All right? It's different when it's a sermon. But when it's one-on-one -on -one with people, speak truth gently. That means in love. When I joined the military, the idea was in basic training, they train you for real war. So yeah, I had to crawl through the mud. Yeah, I got, we, we got shot at, so to speak. Like we had to crawl through trenches and they shot bullets over us and we heard the wisping of bullets, right? To get the realism going, right? We had to go in a gas chamber and whatnot. Hear me out. We had to eat rations and MREs and something like that, right? We got woke up dirt early in the morning and we worked out all day. I mean, they made it pretty tough, long story short, because they're trying to get us comfortable or used to, may I say, not comfortable, but used to war, used to stress, used to difficulty. We had to lug, we had to go walk up mountains, basically all up and down mountains, like 10 miles. It's basically like sand. Like or walking on the beach, where you're wearing like, let's just say 60 pounds of gear and you're a weapon. Hear me out? And they're not like walking like casually. They're like almost picking up a sprint. So it's like, I'd rather just run or just walk. Oh, between a walk and a run is, is very strenuous. It's like, ah, it's like, ah, man, back hurts. You're sweating, carrying all this luggage, you know? They're training us for a real war, what it's like to deal with the intensity, right? And, and that's the idea. Jesus wants to take us and he wants to train us for the real thing. Let me tell you something, folks. It's very similar to the military. When you, when you join the military, they're training you for a real war, to meet the real, to, to confront the real enemy, all right? But there are different kinds of jobs. But still, everyone that joins the military has to know how to defend themselves. They have to go through this thing called basic training. And then there are certain people that go, they get into their profession. So everyone, okay, for example, accepts Jesus Lord and Savior. You have to know the general idea of what the Bible teaches. And then God begins to zero as you seek him more, as you study or train with him more, so to speak. He begins to teach you more specifics about what your job is or your calling is. Some people are called to be cooks. We need cooks. We need cooks, not just in the military. We need cooks in the church to feed people, like literally <laughs> or spiritually, right? We need teachers to teach people what the Bible says. We need people to go out and evangelize, go, people, go, go out and confront the enemy. We need that. We need infantrymen or in this case, women, right? To go out and confront the enemy or to go out and bring people who are lost into the church. We need leaders to, to, to be able to delegate and, and to keep the body unified, right? We need all sorts of people. And so just because our walk is not gonna look the same because we're not the same people and God has different jobs for us to do. 
And he's going to train us in that. Hear me out. And it's God who does the calling. We don't do our own. We don't call ourselves. God calls us. God called me to be a pastor. But before that, I had to start off as a recruit and then move up, long story short, to where I'm at right now. And now we've got a little congregation or church going, and it's kind of cool, right? Some will call it a little Bible study, but it's going to grow. It grows from Bible study into a church, long story short. Hear me out. And so it's been very difficult. The more difficult your calling is, the more harder the training will be. When I started learning how to box, you know, put the gloves on and hit someone, right? <laughs> I ran five miles to the gym, five miles back home every day. And I spent hours in the gym hitting all different kinds of bats, training for different kinds of movements, right? Learning how to duck and dodge and weave and whatnot. Learning how to get hit in the stomach, learning how to punch, learning how to throw a correct punch, learning how to do this and strategize. And then when it was all said and done, right? They put me in the ring. I put headgear on and everything. And the dude that the coach put me in was a professional fighter. He put me against a professional fighter. I've never boxed in my life, right? I had to train for like two months before he put me in the ring. Put me in the ring, the dude annihilated me. And I said, coach, why did you do that? And he says, I'm training you for the real thing. I'm training you for the real thing. So that way, when you go out and you experience the devil, you're not gonna be caught off guard. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, it's not fair. We got so many Christians. Oh my gosh, it's not fair. I, I was one of them. Oh my gosh, it's not fair. This is not fair, that's not fair, that, why? Because these churches didn't train them for the real thing, right? Bible study is like a sparring match. You're supposed to go at it, right? Like you're really going at it with the enemy. You're supposed to really sharpen iron, sharpen iron. Hear me out? You're supposed to challenge one another. But now our Bible studies are so soft. Okay, I'll punch you, okay, oh, okay, right? But when you're at it with an, when you're debating an atheist, they're throwing all kinds of stuff at you, <laughs> right? When you end up in situations where, where there's confrontation, what, you, what are you to do? No one prepared you. And you're just like, what happened? And they knock you out, right? You're like, what happened? Or they win the argument. I don't wanna say win the argument, but they make you look dumb, right? You're like, oh, well, I don't know what to say. And so my, our goal is to, 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 to make you like Christ. You know, Christ always had an answer to someone who challenged him. Do you have an answer for everybody who challenges you? Or are you just like, I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're, not a, you're not a good witness or ambassador of Christ if, if you don't have an answer to how to answer people when they ask you questions. You may be the only experience of who Jesus is to them. And our goal is to train you to give an answer back. Doesn't mean punch them back, but spiritually speaking, it does, right? They punch you with some questions. You hit them with the uppercut with the scriptures. Amen. Let's read this. First Peter chapter five, verse six through 11. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you. Humble yourself under his teachings. At the proper time, casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. Be sober minded. Be alert. You know, fighters are alert, right? They're sober-minded. You don't see a person, a professional fighter getting drunk before his fight, right? Or drunk before he goes to the battle. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around looking for victims, looking for weak people, in other words, like a roaring lion. For anyone he can devour, for anyone he can destroy, for anyone who can't answer for why they believe in Jesus, who doesn't know their scriptures. When I first became a Christian, I had all these different kinds of people trying to sway me off the path. I didn't know the Bible. I just got saved, I just got baptized. I barely started reading the Bible. I had all these people come to me from different religions, come to me and be like, why do you believe in Jesus? Why do you follow him? And, and, and different false Christians, right? 
I'm just going to say it. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons and whatnot, come and try to dissuade me because they knew about their book more than I knew about mine. Right? And I'm just like, oh, no. Almost convinced me. But I had my wife who was like, that's not the Bible. And she sat down and taught me until I started to understand it myself and seek other teachers to teach me. You need teachers. You need a coach. You need people to train you in the word of God. Otherwise, you're going to be, they're going to thrash you out there. I don't have people coming up to me anymore. The devil only looks for people he knows he can deceive. He, he knows that they don't know their word, the word of God. He knows they're not praying. He know, he look, and he deceives them. Look at the world. Filled with dece deceived people. Verse 9. Resist him. Firm in the faith. Firm in the faith of what? Knowing that the same kind of suffering are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while to him be dominion forever. Amen. So check this out. Be sober-minded. How do you get sober-minded? You read your Bible. You constantly redirect yourself to God's word. Let me show you an illustration here real quick. I'm going to close my eyes. You see where my zipper is at? Right? I'm going to put it right here. There's like a little line. See this little line? I'm going to put it right here. The zipper on the little line right here. See that? Now, if I close my eyes and I try to zip it right back here, it's going to be difficult. Maybe I might get it right from time to time. Right? If I feel it, of course. But if I just try to do it every once in a while, it's going to be off. Because, look it, is it where it was? No, it's not where it was. It's supposed to be up here. When I look at it, I can put it back exactly where it's supposed to be. Every time I read my Bible, I can redirect my life back where it's supposed to be, where this line is at, right? The zipper lining up with this line. Every time I read my Bible, I can, I can redirect my life where it's supposed to be because I can look and I can see, oh man, I'm screwing up. But if I'm not looking at my Bible, I'm just, my eyes closed, trying to get it back to the right spot, right? And it's gonna look foolish. We gotta re-zero our compass in the true north. We have to be sober-minded. Sober-minded is knowing exactly where you're at. Just like this zipper. Every time I look at God's word, I'm, I'm, I'm sobering my mind. I'm zeroing back my compass to true north. Hear me out? We got so many lost people in the world. They don't got God in their life. Their zippers all over the place. One minute they're like this. One minute they love you. Next minute they hate you. Next minute they love you. Next minute they can't make up their mind about you. Next minute, I mean, they do that with their job. They're like, oh, I wanna, I wanna work here. No, I don't wanna work here. Oh, I love you. I hate you. I love you. No, 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 no. They're all over the place. But when we're soaking and building our roots in God's word, we begin to become a firm foundation, not just in our work life, our marriage, marriages, our relationship with these people, those people, our children, and our profession. We become a dependable, sturdy person. We become a sober-minded person who can see things clearly. But people who can't see things clearly can't judge clearly. They're like, oh, I don't know. They judge by their emotions and it's all over the place. But when we're... When we're in God's word, we can, we can judge properly. We can see things. They're like a drunk driver that, 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 when they're not in God's word. Oh, I, I don't know. This is where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to do. And so it's imperative that we humble ourselves under God's what? Teachings, God's hand, God's word. And that, that he may exalt us in the proper time. Not that we do it for exaltation, right? Because all the glory goes to him. But we do it because we want to be used by him and we want his peace and glory to rest on us. And if you have anxiety and cares, you need to give it to the Lord. Like, Lord, take this. <laughs> And 
And so a, a boxer who goes in and he trains every day. I, re I remember watching certain people, they go in and they hit certain bags. Not all the time, sometimes they switch it up. And they're always just like practicing their stance, practicing their, their movements, practicing, practicing. They're just practicing makes progress, as my wife says, not perfection, progress. We need to be making progress. We need to be practicing our walk with Jesus every day, looking at the scripture, realigning ourselves up, right? Because sometimes we forget how to throw a jab. Sometimes we forget how to do, how to do a movement over here, how to duck and dodge and bob and weave. Sometimes we forget how to, that we need to work on our abs, that we can, we can get struck in the abs. We need to constantly be looking for blind spots in our lives and working on those areas in our marriages, with our relationship, with our work, trying to be better people like Christ. That's the goal, to be sober-minded. And when you're sober-minded, you can be alert. You can be aware. You know, the Bible says that we are supposed to be like on, on watch duty, like the military, on watch duty. When you're a Christian, you're on watch duty. That means you're constantly alert looking to see if there's any enemies creeping around the, the mountains or the ridge or the tree lines. You're constantly alert. You're constantly aware, right? And then the scriptures also talk about Christians who have fallen asleep. Just like the disciples when Jesus was praying and they were just like, oh. there's people I was in the military who fell asleep on duty. I being one of them, <laughs> right? It's not a pretty picture. It ends up bad and it ends up, the enemy comes creeping in and before you know it, boom, everything starts going crazy, right? I guess in a call of duty, bullets start flying. What happened? Oh no, I fell asleep and the enemy got in and, and now my marriage or my house or my life or my finances or whatever is all over the place or the church or whatever, right? I want you guys to understand that we need to constantly understand that Let's just say this. You don't read the Bible, get in the Bible, stay in the Bible, you're going to fall away naturally. Naturally, your nature, my nature wants to drift away. We want to drift away. I know. I'm a pastor and I still fall away. I'm like, what? All right. What? What happened? And the Lord's like, you didn't spend time with me. I'm like, what? Come on, Lord. And I, I recognize it. I'm like, dang, man. Every time I neglect God's word, I drift off, right, into oblivion. And then I catch it and I go, what's going on? He says, come back to my word. Why are we training? They would say, train like you fight, right? So like I used to box, you're supposed to actually train like you fight, right? Shadow boxing, right? You're supposed to train as you fight. The Apostle Paul writes, train like an athlete trains to win a golden prize. As you're a Christian, train that, your life in such a way that you're going to win Christ. Amen? Train. You see people at the gym. I mean, you see people at the gym taking selfies. You see people at the gym fall, just falling asleep. People at the gym sitting on a bench, doing one exercise, getting up, getting a drink of water, going to the next machine, right? doing one lift again and not really doing anything, long story short. And then you see that well, the few people who are just like trying to push their limits when they're lifting weights, trying to get to the next level. Are you trying to get to the next level in your walk with Christ? Or are you just sitting there just like, oh man, dragging your heels, w walking in the gym, being like, I, I went to the gym, like you went to the church and then you go home and you live in sin. Are you actually trying to better yourself, better your marriage, better your relationship with Jesus and one another, repent of more of your sins, right? Get better, or are you just sitting there just like, wow. I don't know about you, but I want to be a Navy SEAL for Jesus. And they're constantly training. They're constantly exercising. They're constantly lifting. They're constantly working on their craft. That's what makes them the best of the best. I don't understand when I see people wanting to be pastors. It's literally like, this is the best illustration I can give you. The difference between being a Christian and being a pastor, okay? Being a Christian is like just joining the military. 
Being a pastor is like joining special operations. There's no easy day. Every day you are at top notch stress, top notch battlefield, issues with people, top notch, the devil's always attacking, your flesh, not every day, no easy day. If I had known what I would have known now, when I, when I first wanted to be a pastor, I'd be like, nope, nope. Now that I'm already in it, I'm like, well, I'm already here, <laughs> right? It's like, if I'm running a, running a marathon, 26.3 miles, I'm like, well, I've already ran 20 miles. Might as well just finish the last 6.3 miles. <laughs> Hear me out? And so we as Christians need to train like an athlete. Train like a fighter. So train with the mindset that you're going to win. Tra train your body, your mind, your heart. Position yourself to, to that. I'm, when I go into the ring of life, or situations, I'm gonna win. That doesn't mean arguments. That means I'm going to live my life in such a way that people see Jesus in me all the time. Or you just go, oh, I'm just gonna go to church every once in a while, I'll pick up my Bible, I might go to a Bible study if I'm bored and I don't have anything else to do, right? You're never gonna be a not just successful like Christian in the worldly sense, but you're never gonna really know him right I want to get closer to Jesus to God every day but you know what that means I have to be corrected every day that means I have to fight, look at my blind spots and start working on them putting effort towards bettering myself right and so when I look at the battlefield and I see all these weak Christians and it's not that, they're, that that Christ is not in them, that the God of the universe is, does, is not, doesn't dwell in them. He does dwell in them. And I go, Lord, why are they so weak? Why are they so afraid? Why are they? And he says, do you remember when you were in this situation? What was it? And I, and I, look, I look at it now and I go, it was a lack of taking you at your word and actually taking you seriously. You see, the difference between you, Jeremy, the Lord said, and them is that you went to the gym and pushed your limits. They went to the gym and did the bare minimum, if that. Hear me out. The difference between an on fire Christian and a cold or lukewarm Christian is like going to the gym. You went to the gym and you gave it all you got. You pushed your limits. Even if it was a little bit more than you've ever done before. The cold Christian didn't even try. The lukewarm Christian just did the bare minimum. That's the difference. And like I said, in special operations, they're gonna push you to your limits. How much do you want Jesus to be seen in you? is how much you're gonna allow God to push you to their extreme. That's the goal, to be like Christ. That's the prize. It's not to have a big ministry. It's not to right, be liked by people. It's not to have money. It's not any of that. The goal is to be like Jesus. That's the goal. We've got, we've made something else the goal. Which I would say false Christianity. I would say idolatry. To know him and be with him is to experience his glory and his peace within you. And the more you want draw near to him, he draws near to you. And the more you draw near to him is the more of his peace that clothes you. So Christians like, I don't have peace in my life. Like, because you're not drawing near to God. You're not seeking him. You're not, putting, you're not loving him with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. And so going back to this message, you're like, what does that have to do with this? I don't know. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I 
we as Christians have watered down the Bible. We, we, have, we have not prepared people for the truth. Because we, the truth is we want more people to come to our church. But when hard times hit, right? It's like hitting a speed bump in life on a boat, I guess. If there was speed bumps in the ocean, right? And then a bunch of people fall out. We're like, what happened? Those people weren't truly invested. Those people didn't realize that they were in a war and they needed to train like they're going to war. They need to really soak themselves in God's word. That's why they fell away. That's why they fell out. Either they were never saved or they were never serious. Right? And that's why they fall out. That's why it's, it's hard for them to forgive. That's why it's hard for them to take God at his word and to actually live the Christian life as God, as Jesus promised it. They quote to you scripture, but look at their life. That's why they keep falling into sin, right? And playing the woe is me, right? That's why they always have every excuse under the sun. See what I'm saying? Because they didn't take God at his word and they weren't fully invested. And God sent the speed bump in the ocean for the boat to hit to get those people out of here. That's the point. So people say, oh man, I failed as a pastor. A bunch of people left my church. I'll be like, no, no. They were bound to fly out because they didn't put their seatbelts on. They didn't put the word of God on, right? They weren't really serious. And they fell out because they weren't really among us. They were, they were, they were among us, but they weren't of us. They, they didn't really want Jesus. They wanted sin. They wanted something else. They didn't really care. And so when we, when that happens in our life, we have to understand that that's God who's sending the wave <coughs> to, to refine us or to toss us overboard. Hear me out? And they, they, these are the very people that, that I remember. I'm going to finish here, which means give me five minutes <laughs> or ten. <laughs> I saw this in the military. I saw people after I went through basic training. Many people, well, a few people didn't make it through because they're like, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Well, that's what you signed the contract for. Just like you signed up for Jesus. I don't know it was going to be like this. Yeah. And then we get to our duty station. And then we found out uh, when we first got there that your unit, uh, when I first got there, your unit's going to deploy. Your unit is going to Iraq into a hostile country where people want to kill you. And I dreamt of this, but now it's actually happening. And now I'm like, how do I get out of this? And I actually saw one dude he did something. I don't know what he did, right? But he's got like a rash or something. He did something to get out of it. And as it was leading up to that time to actually ship out and go overseas, I was like, you know, everything's going to be fine. If I die, I die, right? This is what I signed up for. This is what I told myself. This is what I signed up for. Why am I afraid all of a sudden to go over to a battlefield when I'm in the military, when I signed up for it, knowing when I joined the military that I could be deployed, right? And it's crazy because so many people sign up for the military, but they don't want to be deployed. There are literally like sergeant majors, lieutenant colonels, colonels, majors. I mean, there's so many like high-ranking people, first sergeants, right? They go, they got no deployment badge on their right. Because the right side means you deployed. You've been over in a hostile country. They got nothing. And they, they even retire that way. They had 20 years and they never go and see combat. You got these brand new privates, right? P, uh, uh, E1, right? They got like no rank. When you have like, when you're P, P, E1, you've got no, it's just a fuzzy. That's what they call you, fuzzy, right? Private, PFC. They go overseas and they get their combat um, insignia on the right side 
of the shoulder. How's that possible? And you can tell there's a difference. There's a difference. I met so many like E4 specialists, low ranking people. They got combat badges all over their right side. They walk and live differently. They walk and live differently. The way they carry themselves, the way they are, right? They act like they're the leaders because they really are, right? They're like, they're strong. They're like, man, this, this 20 year old is like, man, he's like a man, right? Because he's been deployed, he's seen combat, he's been shot at, he shot back, he lost buddies to his left and right, right? He's been in war. And then you have this like 50 year old, 60 year old man who's leading, uh, supposed to be a leader, never been deployed. Happens all the time. It's sad. And that's the same thing as, as, as in Christianity. We're gonna have to decide what kind of Christian we're gonna wanna be. Do you wanna be the Christian who knows everything about the Bible? I know Greek, I know Hebrew, I know every background cultural beliefs about the Old Testament, the New Testament, right? Do you wanna be that kind of Christian? Because there's many of those Christians, right? There's many of those soldiers. They know everything about everything. There's people that go to the gym, they know every weight in the gym, but they never lifted one of them. There's many of those people who, I can hit this bag like this. There's a total different experience. It's like a totally different experience. It's like almost like alien to hitting a bag versus actually getting punched or hitting a person. Fighting a person is totally different than fighting a bag, right? Because the bag's not gonna hit you back. The bag's not gonna, you know, you strategize against you. The bag is not gonna counter your punches, right? See what I'm saying? The bag's not gonna move around the ring. <laughs> and it's the same thing with Christians. You can only learn so much in, in, a, in a Bible college or seminary. You can only learn so, you can only learn intellectually. They can't prepare you for things like, well, when you have issues with one another, right? <laughs> Before I became a pastor, I went to Bible college, all that. Great. But guess what? Went to the Lord's like, you need to get out of Bible college. It's time to take you to the combat zone. I was like, no, nah, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable in the Bible college. I'm comfortable just having this portion of the of, of, of ministry. And the Lord's like, you really want to know me? I said, yeah, Lord, I want to know you. He says, get out of Bible college and follow me. And he brought me to the desert. Or may I say, he brought me to the, to the combat zone. And like I, like I said, when I used to learn how to box, I could hit every bag. No problem. Right? The one that the one that swings back and forth. I could do that. Whoa, 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 dodge, boop, boop, boop. Right? Heavy bags. I could hit those heavy bags like nothing. I could do a thousand sit-ups, a thousand push-ups. When the coach finally put me in the ring and the dude started hitting me, I was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. First punch, I was like, I want to get out of here. First punch. Boom. And I looked at the coach. I was like, why did you put me in the ring with this dude who can beat the crap out of me? He's like, because I want to teach you for real what fighting's about. And it took me a while to actually start to exercise what I learned from those other bags. What I learned from the Bible to actually put it into practice. Hear me out? Everybody wants to be a soldier, but nobody wants to be shot at or have grenades go off on them. Or deploy, right? Everybody wants to be a Christian, but nobody wants to be persecuted, hated, spit on, or even killed. So many people don't want to go to church because they get offended. I mean, look at Jesus. Was he offended when they crucified him? You know, I don't want to forgive. I don't want to forgive because this person looked at me wrong. Really? Within this last month, someone tried to accuse me of basically pedophilia. 
I had to go report that to the police because there was a bunch of nonsense. All right? I've been dealing with people calling me calling me the most horrible things, racist things ever. All right? Dealing with nonstop accusations. This dude actually wrote like a whole piece of paper of how I'm a deceptive person and all that stuff. Right? And, and this has just been coming at me left and right this whole month. Right? I don't even know if I'm going to have a church left because half the church is upset because I corrected them. Gently. Right? It's crazy. But I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for him. Amen? And he gives me the strength to carry forward. And then I, when it happens, I said to the Lord, Lord, why? Why do I got to go through this? He's like, Jeremy, isn't this what you signed up for? That people are going to spit and mock at you and you're going to, you're going to exchange their wrath for a blessing. When they, when they mock you, you're going to bless them. When they're mean to you, you're going to be kind to them. It, when they slap you on the right cheek, you're going to turn to them the other. Isn't that what you signed up for when you became a Christian? When you joined the Lord's ranks? Join the Lord's military. I never said it was going to be easy, but I said I would be with you. Right? And guess what? I got to get, pick it up again and do it again tomorrow. Do it again today. Love on these people who mock me and ridicule me and talk bad about me. But I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for him. Right? And do it for my brothers and sisters who do stand to my left and to my right and support me as I support them in times of struggle or need. Why do we train so hard as Christians? This is why. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around looking like a lion roaring, looking for anyone he can destroy, looking for weak people. When I first got saved, I met this crazy dude. The devil spoke right through him. Long story short. And he said, it was fun playing with you. Right? He's like, you know what I'm going to be doing all night? He said, what are you going to be doing all night? He's going to be looking for lost souls. That's what he told me. Lost people that I could devour. That I could eat up, chew up, spit out. Right? Now, I'm a Navy SEAL for Jesus. Amen? The devil's got to do a lot. To come at me now. He's got to do everything. He's got to, he got to send the whole community against me just to try to stop me. He can't come at me like he did before. Right? Like Peter, little girl, he got afraid of a little girl. Right? He got to come at me through multiple people, multiple situations. Right? He's got to send the tanks and the artillery now because he knows how strong I am in God's word. That I train when I get in God's word that I train how I'm gonna fight. I'm not like, okay, I'll tap you. Okay, you tap me. Okay, all right, that was great training. That was great Bible study, right? That was great. You know, I didn't offend you. You didn't offend me, that's great. And then they come across the devil and then the devil's like, hi, how do again? And they're just like, oh. And they're like, what happened? And then they come crying to me, the pastor. Ooh, and I'm like, didn't you not know that? I could have told you you're going to get uppercutted. I tried to teach you. I tried to train you, but you don't want to listen. Well, you are offending me. Who's more offended now? Would you rather have a loving person offend you or the devil who's, or demonic people who hate you? Right? The choice is yours. We were born in a battlefield. It's a battlefield, baby. That's war. That's crazy because I come across so many Christians. They're just like, I, I gotta have my certain things and all that stuff and I just look at them and I'm like you've never went to war you never went to battle before you never went to you never been in a fight spiritually speaking spiritually speaking you can smack them on the face and they'll be like oh. right I'm like what happens if I actually try to fight you and actually uppercut you with some scripture and show you what Jesus is like right I actually did that a few times. They got offended. <laughs> I was like, and so I'm glad that I took the Lord's way. Because the only person who's going to prepare you to be like Christ is Christ. 
And you know what he's going to do to sharpen you? He's going to send you to combat. <coughs> and he's going to allow the devil and people to ravage you. And then it's going to sharpen you and make you stronger. Actually give you some real muscle in your faith. And you're going to be like, okay, you're going to get hit. And you're, you're going to know how to come back. You're not going to be surprised. You're going to be like, oh, this is part of it. This is part of it. Oh, okay. Okay, you're going to do this? Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, you're going to uppercut me? Okay, I'm going to back up real quick, and then I'm going to do this, right? We got multiple Christians being like, the devil just has to look at them, and they just be like, oh, and they fall down, right? Theologically, up in the head, they know a lot. But they never got persecuted like the apostles, like the prophets, right? Like Jesus. When that starts happening, that's how you know when you're walking with Christ. When people start hating your guts, that's how you know you're walking with Jesus. Amen? That's how you know he's close to you. But when you're not walking with Christ, it's going to be sunshines and rainbow every day. But when you are, you're going to be like, ah. Oh. Well, this is what Jeremy was talking about. That's all I got for you guys. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines. This is I Am Love Church. This is uh, training for war. It's a war zone. All right? Home? Home away from homes? That's heaven. That's heaven. And our, our temporary homes should be our homes when we get home. Are you training like you're in war? Or are you just letting the, the, the devil deceive you or destroy you deceive you being like you don't take your walk with Jesus seriously or you don't you're not saved it's sunshine's a rainbow for you or are you saved but you're put on the bench the devil's got you on the bench because you're afraid I don't know I tell you something man I've been on a battlefield for about three years now. Three years on the battlefield with the Lord. I, I don't want to go to a retreat. I, I don't want to go to a, a mountaintop. I do, and I because I need it from time to time. But I like being in the battlefield because I like seeing the devil get mad. <laughs> and he does it through people, and he does it through just directly tries to come in. It, it's and I want to see God's kingdom move forward. I'm trying to figure out how I can have a mountaintop experience while I'm doing the will of God. I don't know. Figure that one out. Because I just like I'm all for mushy gushy hugs and all that stuff and rest time and stuff like that. Trust me. But I want to push back as much of the devil's kingdom I can in this world before I depart. So it's almost like it becomes addicting. To, <laughs> to reach the next level i hope you get as addicted if not more than i am amen let's pray father bless this word thank you bless them forgive them forgive me teach us refresh us in jesus name amen and god bless